Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesegi, and this is The Limiting Factor. This is the fourth video of the LFP battery series, and today we'll be taking a closer look at the BYD Blade battery. We'll cover why Blade batteries are so safe, cell and pack level energy densities, how BYD turned a prismatic cell into a structural member within the vehicle, BYD's claims of a thousand kilometers of range, pack level cost, and what the Blade battery means for Tesla. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors, and I hope will eventually allow me to do this full time. As always, the links for support are in the description. The best place to start with the BYD Blade battery is safety, because BYD's claims of a non-flammable battery cell are what the Blade battery is best known for. Let's look at how BYD was able to achieve this. In the second LFP battery video, I explained that LFP batteries are safer because the cathode crystal structure decomposes at high temperatures, and when it eventually does decompose, it releases less heat than nickel-based layered oxide cathodes like NCA and NMC. On screen is a prismatic NMC battery cell in a nail puncture test. It immediately blows out the burst diaphragm to release gases and then erupts into a white hot ball of fire. Next is a prismatic LFP battery cell. The reaction here is lethargic in comparison to the NMC battery cell. It eventually blows out the burst diaphragm but doesn't erupt into flames. Finally, the blade cell. Nothing. How does the blade cell perform so well in this test, despite the fact that it uses the same chemistry as the prismatic LFP battery cell? BYD explains that it's for two reasons. First, the blade cells are long and thin, which dissipates heat efficiently. When a battery cell short circuits, it begins a process called thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is a feedback loop where heat leads to decomposition, Decomposition leads to reactions that generate heat, which leads to more decomposition and heat. The blade cell stops thermal runaway because the shape of the battery cell is like a heat sink. It has a large surface area in comparison to its volume. This is as opposed to prismatic batteries, which have a low surface area in comparison to their volume. The boxy shape traps heat, which exacerbates thermal runaway. Second, BYD says that the electron circuit in the BYD battery is longer. To me, this explanation doesn't make sense. When you run a nail through a battery cell, it creates a short circuit between the anode and cathode, which is about the same diameter as a white blood cell. Rather than the electrons traveling a long circuit through a wire in a controlled way from the anode to the cathode, they travel in a shorter direct circuit in an uncontrolled way. This discharges the battery in a matter of seconds, rather than a more typical four to eight hours, releasing an enormous amount of energy and therefore heat. That is, the length of the short circuit from the anode to the cathode is the same no matter what the dimensions of the battery cell. However, I think I know what BYD was attempting to communicate here. With a prismatic battery cell, the nail puncture goes through more layers, creating more short circuits. More short circuits mean more energy is released more quickly, and therefore more heat. The BYD blade cell is about 75% thinner than a prismatic cell, which means 75% fewer short circuits, meaning a fraction of the heat generation. The reduced heat generation combined with a greater ability to dissipate that heat is what allows the blade cell to run so cool during the nail puncture test compared to a typical prismatic LFP battery cell. Could the blade form factor be applied to nickel-based chemistries to increase safety? My view is no. The blade form factor works with LFP because LFP generates minimal heat during decomposition and resists generating that heat until it reaches far higher temperatures. High nickel chemistries store more energy in a smaller volume and generate quite a bit more heat and at lower temperatures, so changing the form factor probably wouldn't be enough to break the thermal runaway loop. Instead, for now, it appears the best way to improve the safety of nickel-based chemistries is to provide them with a path to vent pressure and flames safely. Let's move on to BYD's energy density claims. 
As discussed in the LFP battery video, there are two metrics for energy density. The first is gravimetric energy density, which is how much energy a battery can store for a given weight. The second is volumetric energy density, which is how much energy can be stored in a given volume. For lithium-ion batteries in automotive applications, using gravimetric energy density has tended to make sense, because they've typically been nickel-based lithium-ion batteries. Nickel-based batteries tend to have good gravimetric energy density and great volumetric energy density. That is, volume wasn't the primary limiting factor for nickel-based battery pack size. LFP batteries are a slightly different beast than nickel-based batteries. Although gravimetric energy density matters for LFP battery cells, it's not their primary handicap. The primary handicap of LFP battery cells is their low volumetric energy density. This is why, as explained in the LFP video, LFP battery cells are usually produced in prismatic formats, which are cuboid. These cuboid shapes can fill the space in the bottom of a vehicle better than cylinders. LFP is compatible with these large prismatic cell formats because the chemistry is inherently safer than nickel-based cells. Cell casings are typically made of steel, which offers fire protection due to its high melting point. LFP is safer, so less steel protection is required and larger cells can be used. High nickel chemistries are more volatile, and so the cells have to be smaller in comparison to LFP cells. With all that in mind, let's compare the energy density specs of BYD LFP blade cells in packs to CATL LFP battery cells in packs. There are reports that CATL is currently shipping batteries with a gravimetric energy density of 200 watt hours per kilogram. I haven't found confirmation of that, but it aligns with CATL's development timeline. At 200 watt hours per kilogram for gravimetric energy density, they were expecting to hit 450 watt hours per liter for volumetric energy density. All the reports I've seen for BYD's blade cells indicate around 448 watt hours per liter and 165 watt hours per kilogram. As far as I know, there's no publicly available data yet from a teardown. All the figures I'll be providing today were either from BYD, sources out of China, or government reports from China. The volumetric energy density of blade cells versus CATL cells is for all intents and purposes identical at 448 versus 450 watt-hours per liter, while the gravimetric energy density of the blade cells is much lower at 165 versus 200 watt-hours per kilogram. Since both these sets of numbers are for the same chemistry, why the difference? Time for some speculation. The BYD blade cells replace the steel beams that are usually used in and around automotive battery packs. Typically, battery cell casings are around 125 microns thick, roughly a tenth of a millimeter. I'd be surprised if that's enough to provide the rigidity these cells will need as structural members in the battery pack and the vehicle, and so each cell might be using a slightly thicker steel casing to provide rigidity. Steel is dense, so even a slight increase in thickness to the battery cell casing would greatly reduce gravimetric energy density. Let's do a quick summary before moving on to pack level energy density. BYD's claim of 448 watt-hours per liter is industry-leading and appears to be on par with what CATL is rumored to be producing. On the gravimetric front, BYD blade cells achieve 165 watt-hours per kilogram compared to 200 watt-hours per kilogram for CATL. My assumption is the lower energy density is due to thicker steel for the BYD cell casings. BYD can make up for that by removing steel elsewhere in the vehicle. More on that later in the video. On to pack level energy density. BYD claims that the blade pack achieves a packing density of 62.4%. 62.4% times 448 watt hours per liter means a pack level energy density of 280 watt hours per liter. CATL is probably achieving a packing density of 43%, leading to a pack level energy density of 194 watt hours per liter. BYD's claims would place their pack level volumetric energy density 44% higher than a CATL LFP pack. Although I'm sure BYD's made great leaps, I view a 44% improvement over CATL LFP as unlikely. 
If BYD's numbers were correct, they would be achieving higher energy densities with LFP than Tesla is achieving in the Model 3 with nickel-based battery packs. The pack level energy density of the nickel based Model 3 battery is 238 watt hours per liter versus the 280 watt hours per liter claimed by BYD for the blade, or 18% better. Given LFP's poor volumetric energy density and nickel's high volumetric energy density, I can't see a pathway for LFP packs to outperform nickel packs, even with a lot of engineering magic. What I'm hearing from inside the industry reflects that. Independent sources within the industry that have seen teardowns of the blade pack have indicated that nickel-based battery packs still have a 10% edge compared to BYD blade batteries. This would place the BYD blade battery at around 214 watt-hours per liter rather than 280 watt-hours per liter. But, without any publicly available information to back that up, let's look for other evidence to back up the reports that BYD is achieving 18% greater volumetric energy density with LFP than a battery pack with nickel-based battery cells. BYD's flagship EV, the BYD Han, is BYD's longest-range EV at 605 kilometers of range. They appear to have vehicles with longer ranges, but from what I can tell, those vehicles are hybrids or concept vehicles. 605 kilometers is 375 miles of NEDC range, which equates to about 262 miles of EPA range, give or take about 30 miles. That 262 miles of range is provided by a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack built on blade technology. Again, that's BYD's longest range flagship vehicle in 2021. If you know of a vehicle I'm missing here, let me know in the comments below. 77 kilowatt hours is fairly low capacity in 2021 for a vehicle that's the same length as the Tesla Model S. The new Model S has a battery pack that's around 99 kilowatt hours and achieves on average a range of about 381 miles across trims. It's clear that BYD isn't trouncing Tesla by 18%. It's the opposite. The Model S has a range that's 45% greater than the Han. Let's bring in BYD's aspirations for the Blade Pack to try and level the playing field. BYD appears to be targeting 1,000 kilometers for their concept vehicle, the Ocean X, which is a mid-sized sedan. When converted to an EPA test cycle and miles, 1,000 kilometers means about 434 miles of range. Is that possible? Tesla fits an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack under the Model 3, which is also a mid-size sedan. If BYD is claiming they can do 18% better with respect to the volumetric energy density of their pack, I estimate that to mean a 97 kilowatt hour battery pack in the same volume as Tesla's 82 kilowatt hour pack. This chart from Matty Mogul will help us put that in perspective. The Model 3 delivers an energy efficiency of just over 4.5 miles of EPA range per kilowatt hour. Tesla has market-leading efficiency with their current generation of vehicles and pack architecture, which uses a nickel chemistry. BYD is claiming that the Ocean X would fall right in line with Tesla's numbers with 4.5 miles of EPA range per kilowatt hour. This seems far-fetched. Why? Their current generation flagship, the BYD Han, only gets about 3.5 miles of EPA range per kilowatt hour, which is 22% less than their projection for the Ocean X. I'm not saying it's impossible for BYD to hit 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. In fact, I think BYD will eventually reach Tesla level efficiency with an LFP battery pack despite lower cell level energy density. However, it will require not only the blade structural battery, but also powertrain, drag coefficient, and chemistry improvements. This could be possible before 2025, but it would be quite an achievement. 2025 or later seems more likely. Time for another interim summary. At the pack level, BYD claims that their blade battery can achieve a volumetric energy density of 44% higher than CATL LFP and 18% greater than the pack and a nickel-based Model 3. This sounds too good to be true and it probably is. From what I hear from those in the industry who've seen teardowns, the Model 3 with 2170 cells leads by 10% rather than trails by 18%. 
If we look to reality to confirm BYD's energy density claims, things don't add up. The BYD Han falls well short of 300 miles of EPA range, rather than hitting the 434 miles of range that they're touting with their marketing. In the meantime, the Tesla structural battery will be in vehicles soon, which should do for nickel chemistries what the Blade battery did for LFP chemistries. The structural battery will increase both the volumetric and gravimetric pack level energy density of nickel-based batteries, and I'm speculating that it will also be safer than other nickel-based battery packs. As a final note on the Blade battery, it looks to be 26% cheaper than competing LFP battery cells. CATL battery packs cost about $88 per kilowatt hour, whereas the BYD Blade battery packs cost about $65 per kilowatt hour. Besides this tweet from at D. Kurak that references Everbright Securities, I've confirmed these numbers through another source. This should make BYD's vehicles quite profitable. Interestingly, there are rumors that Tesla and BYD are courting each other. If they are, let's hope those discussions are fruitful. Tesla needs all the battery cells they can get, and the Blade battery pack would be deadly in the hands of Tesla. If the Blade Pack offered a 10% pack level energy density improvement and a 26% cost reduction over CATL LFP, Tesla could increase the range of their LFP standard range vehicles from 253 miles of range to around 275 miles of range while getting the battery pack about 18% cheaper. Additionally, $65 per kilowatt hour is actually cheap enough for Tesla to make a $25,000 subcompact vehicle at roughly a 30% profit margin. While we're on the topic of battery cost, it's worth noting that we're starting to see inflation in the battery industry. There are reports that BYD is increasing prices by 20%. But even with a 20% increase, BYD's prices at the pack level would still be just $78 per kilowatt hour, $10 less than CATL. BYD certainly isn't alone here. Battery prices are expected to increase across the board in 2022. For those who don't have in-house cell production and a secure material supply, prices will be relatively flat for the next few years, possibly longer. How does BYD achieve such low manufacturing cost? I'm guessing it has a lot to do with the fact that the BYD Blade battery pack is a structural battery pack. Its ladder frame structure will eliminate parts, accelerate production, and provide torsional rigidity to reduce weight and costs in other parts of the vehicle. Furthermore, Blade battery cells are large. Large cells require less material and fewer manufacturing operations per kilowatt hour of cells produced, which should reduce costs at the cell level. You may be wondering how the BYD structural pack compares to the Tesla structural pack. My view is that each approach is optimized for the chemistry it's been designed around. LFP for BYD and high nickel for Tesla. That's not to say Tesla's structural pack can't be used for LFP. I think it will. It's just optimized for high nickel. The risk of fire is minimal with the LFP-based blade battery. Therefore, it may not need fire retardant material between the batteries. Instead, BYD can use cheap and abundant steel to reinforce their battery cells to create rigidity with a ladder frame design. Tesla's structural pack uses 4680 cylindrical battery cells because nickel-based battery cells are high energy and a smaller cell makes the energy easier to contain safely. However, even though the 4680 cell is smaller than blade cells, there's still a risk of fire spreading between cells. So, Tesla needed to take a completely different approach. Their battery cells are bonded with fire-retardant epoxy foam and two face sheets to form a contiguous honeycomb structure that takes advantage of the cylindrical shape of the 4680 to form a structurally unified slab that's lightweight, super strong, and fire-retardant. In summary, the BYD Blade Battery and BYD Blade Battery Pack are both impressive engineering achievements that capitalize on the strengths of the battery chemistry they were designed around. LFP allows for large battery cells, and BYD discovered that long and thin battery cells act like a heat sink to rapidly wick away heat, and appear to reduce heat generation by reducing the number of layers within the battery cells. 
These effects leverage the inherent safety of the chemistry to create what may be the safest vehicle battery pack that's commercially available. Furthermore, the form factor also enables a strong, lightweight ladder frame structure within the vehicle that, when combined with the safety of the blade, allows for a lower profile, lighter weight battery pack. Blade battery packs should allow for vehicles with more range than typical LFP battery packs through higher volumetric energy density. They also appear to be easier to manufacture, resulting in a pack level cost that's 26% less than CATL LFP batteries. This makes the blade ideal for medium range, low cost vehicles. 300 miles of range is still a stretch for LFP, despite BYD's claims of a 1,000 kilometer potential range with their battery and vehicle architecture. This bears out in the BYD Han, BYD's flagship sedan, which achieves just 605 kilometers on a generous test cycle rather than 1,000 kilometers. That is, 262 miles of EPA range instead of the 434 miles of range they're targeting. I'm sure they'll get there, but I think it'll take three years or more rather than being something we can expect in the next year or two. Regardless, the blade is a step forward, and I hope Tesla ends up working with BYD at some point. The brilliant engineering and low cost of the BYD Blade battery pack coupled with Tesla's superior hardware and software would add up to a $25,000 subcompact Tesla that ticks every box from cost to safety to range while potentially offering 30% margins. In the next LFP video, I'll cover Tesla LFP. But before that, there'll be a video on some lesser known features of the Gigapress and Gigacasting process that make Gigacastings possible. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video. I'm also active on Twitter. You can find the details in the description, and I look forward to hearing from you. A special thanks to Brad King, Lars, and Joel Schwartzbart for your generous support of the channel, my YouTube members, and all the other patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for tuning in.